on my vlog about the Sony CX240, I had mentioned that I had put a fish eye on it, which was clearly obvious through the vision. Um, somebody actually asked me how I was able to put the fish eye on here, and because it wasn't a simple question, I figured I would have to do a video on it because I did kind of partially explain how I did it to the person, but I figured an actual video demonstration of how I did it would be good. So what I've done is I've gone and reverted everything back to the way it was. Took a little bit of time to do such things, um, but now I can actually show you guys. So a disclaimer, um, this is going to modify and I guess deface the Sony CX240, so do not do this if you do not own this camera. This is not a threaded modification. This is a full, it's stuck there, and if you take it off, you're going to have to go home and do this all over again to get it back on. So make sure that it is totally okay, that it is fine to do this, that you are willing to do this. There is the possibility that, that your camera will, camera will be damaged. Um, there's the possibility that if you don't do this properly, slowly and carefully, you will glue your lens open, closed, or get glue on parts of your camera like your microphone or the lens itself that you don't want glue being on. Um, so now that I've explained that this is a risk to damaging the camera, a risk to getting you in trouble if this is not your camera, we can get to what we actually need. So obviously you need the Sony CX240 um, HDR Handycam. Um, this is pretty much, other than the little bits of glue you're seeing down here, this is pretty much what you're going to see um, when you first get it. Um, you're going to need some electrical tape. Just, this is uh, mostly cosmetic, but it does add a little bit of strength to what we're going to be doing. Um, you're going to need a razor blade or a pair of scissors. Um, these aren't absolutely necessary, uh, but this gives a nice cleaner cut to the tape, so it doesn't look so scrappy. Um, and then, of course, we're going to need a hot glue gun, because like I said, this is modifying the camera permanently. Um, or I guess it's semi-permanently, because it can always be removed. But it's a messy job to remove it, and it's also a messy job to do it. So you're going to need a hot glue gun. Um, this one, I'm pretty sure, is a medium temperature hot glue gun. I'm not sure if a low temperature hot glue gun will actually uh, work too great. And if it's a low temperature hot glue gun and you're filming out in the summer and it gets really, really hot, the hot glue might actually soften up quite a bit. So you're going to want um, glue sticks that require a really super high temperature to melt. But at the same time, you don't want it to be too high of a temperature because the camera is plastic and you don't want to melt the camera itself or damage it. So I'm using a medium temperature gun. Try and find one that looks like this at an arts and crafts store. Um, I'm not sure of the actual model, um, but you're going to want one of these guys. This is a 120 volt, 60 hertz, 40 watt. Um, so you're going to want to find something about that. And for the fish eye itself, you're going to need, um, I'm using a Seikar Super Wider Semi Fish Eye 0.42 made in Japan. Looks like this. Uh, I found this at a thrift shop for 10 bucks. Um, so essentially you're going to need a fisheye lens of some kind that is relatively the same size of the face of your camera, which since mine's not, you might also need, if you can't find a fisheye basically that isn't the same size as the front of this camera, then you want a fisheye that can come apart and it's three piece fisheye. So essentially you got your you get the front of your the front of your lens, which is where some of the fisheye happens to move into play. Um, then you've got the back part, which is where the threading is. And then you've got this little piece in here, which is a little difficult to get out sometimes. Give me a second. He likes to get stuck in there. But essentially, there's a little piece in there. You can see that round part that I'm actually touching with my finger. That part is actually supposed to come out. But there we go. Um, but it looks like this. 
So, again, you're going to want a fish eye with three pieces. Um, technically, there's four pieces because this piece of glass in here is actually supposed to come out. Um, this is a, a protective uh, cover for the lens, so if any skateboard hits it, this breaks before the lens actually breaks. But you're going to want one that has a front piece, a middle piece, and a back piece. These two pieces, when you look through them, will probably be unfocused. And this part won't be unfocused, but this is the part that we want, the middle part. Um, the outer part, the not-so-deep part, is going to be facing away from the camera. And this really deep part is actually going to be the part that goes right up against the face of the camera. Now, I discovered this by accident. I got curious. I took this fisheye lens out because I wanted to use it with this because this isn't very great for skateboarding um, without fisheye attached to it because you have to be like on the dot perfect with the framing of the trick. Um, and I just kind of took this out of the middle and I just held it in front of the camera. And what did I know? It worked. And I was like, dude, that's sick. Um, so essentially, what you want to do is it's a good idea to have the camera on for this. Um, you want to have the camera zoomed out completely. You don't want it being zoomed in at all. You want to have the shutter open. And you want to hold this in front of the camera. Because I'm not sure if this is going to work on everyone's. Maybe mine is by fluke working. But you essentially want to sit this camera on its back. And hold the lens while the screen's open over the camera. And find the sweet spot for it so that you know it's aligned nicely like so you're always going to have a border which is why we're going to do something else but once you've found the sweet spot for that middle part to go on your camera you're going to want to hold it down like so and then take your hot glue gun and very carefully go around the edges here while knocking your vaporizers over and put just a little bit around the edge and this is the part that's a little painful for some people or all people you want to lick your finger just a little bit and press that glue down you can wait for it to cool just a little bit but what that does is it sort of flattens it out it makes it nicer putting too much pressure on the lens can actually make it slip so don't put too much pressure. Make sure it's like dead center and not near the edge because this is round. If you push on the side, it's going to start pushing out that way. Um, and you're going to want to do this all the way around the, the lens. But once you get to this part, which is the bottom of the camera area, you got to be super, and I mean super careful, because those are your microphones right there. You do not want to get glue into the microphone. You don't want to get glue over the microphone. You don't want glue anywhere near the microphone because then you're going to end up with a muffled sound and that's never good. Um, but then basically just do this whole gluing thing around the whole lens. And then once that's done, we can move on to the next stage. Um, at a certain point, you won't have to be holding the lens down anymore, but I like to do it just to be 100% sure that the lens is glued around before I let go. Um, now, the thing I like to do to add some extra security is around the edges of the lens, like here, I like to go from where we glued the first time and go up the side of the lens just a little bit, just to sort of add like a finger of glue, I guess, to make it sort of like hold on a little bit more so I like to just I'll do a couple and then I'll show you what I mean and I also like to lick and press and I'll do this all the way around I won't do too many of them because I don't want to have too much work to do in case I ever want to undo this if I get like a camera that actually supports a fish eye without modification. Um, camera's telling me that it's battery's dying, but it's okay. It's totally okay. Um, so, you want to get rid of all these stringy, lingy things that hot glue guns tend to leave behind. But now what you can see that I've put sort of these 
little nibs around the edge. Um, there's one right here, one right there, one right there. And I just basically do that, like I said, for more support. It sort of makes it seem like there's fingers holding it like this around it. Um, and the next step, you can close the camera now. Once it turns on, you can close the camera now so it's not on anymore. Um, and I, mean, I guess I'll open it up so you guys can see that it's actually pointing at the camera decently. Uh, the lighting is bad in here, I do apologize. But now you can see that this actually works. Um, so what we're going to do with the electrical tape is we're going to cut off about, uh, I guess, a foot and a half. Um, I'm just going to use my teeth to bite it at first, and then I'm going to stick it to something where it's not actually going to like stick forever and give it a nice, clean cut. And I'm going to do that to both sides of the tape. And you don't really need to see this. Because I suppose you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, you want to give it a nice clean cut to the tape. You can barely see that. Um, just so it looks nicer. Um, then we're going to put the tape on the ed right on the edge of the lens here. Nice and tight but not too tight because you did just glue so the glue could still be warm and soft. And then we're going to wrap this around the lens. And then once we get right to the other side of the lens, basically where we began, we're going to pull the tape on an angle a little bit so it starts going down in a spiral. And we're going to wrap it around the base of where we glued the lens. And then go back up again. And then we're going to press this tape carefully against the actual body of the camera and then pinch around the lens just to make it stick and now we have a fisheye lens attached to our Sony CX240 you're going to want to grab a, a lens rag of some kind now that you had your finger on it and give this a little wipe and then you will have yourself a fisheye on a Sony CX240 now if you want to get rid of this little bubbly border around the camera all you have to do is zoom in just a little bit until it goes away and you want to make sure that you have your uh, Sony steady shot turned off otherwise you're gonna get um, a shaky fisheye look and what I mean by that is when you can see this black border and you have steady shot on it's gonna actually shift from left to right up and down while the camera is shaking um, because what Sony does is with their steady shot is it zooms in just a little bit automatically you can't adjust that and what it does is it finds your face or an object that's a relative in the scene and it kind of keeps it centered by uh, sort of moving the uh, frame up and down um, to sort of I guess simulate a steady cam so that's why they call it steady shot so you can just zoom this in just a little bit to get rid of that border and you're golden now I know this camera looks like the lighting and stuff is really bad and there's a lot of glare and shit but I'm going to go up here which you can already see that the lighting is a lot better I'm going to open this door and you guys can see that <laughs> it's still pretty decent everything's pretty good nothing wrong with the lens everything works great the lighting is a bit crazy I hope because it just snowed um, so everything's like ultra white outside right now but now you know that it works and that is how you put a fisheye lens on the Sony CX240. I will see you guys in one of my next videos. Oh, and don't forget to click that subscribe button, that like button, and leave a comment below telling me what you guys want to see, what you guys like seeing, and if you have any problems with putting this lens together, uh, I'll try to help you out the best I can. So, I'll see you guys later.